IPA. Um, we decided to look at um, video analysis, so mobile video analysis and how it can facilitate learning outcomes for um, the PDHP syllabus. So we, I was on Prack at Barker College, um, pretty good private school, and the technology they were using were literally like old school camcorders with a tripod, getting them out, setting them up. There weren't enough to go around, they're expensive. The software you have to use on the computers um, to analyse it was basically a pain in the ass. Um, so we thought that we'd just look at a couple of cheap apps that you can get on your iPad and your phone um, and how they would actually be used um, in the same sort of way. So looking at a golf swing or something like that. Um, Jamie actually was able to use this um, to some extent on his prac. I think you your first prac. Yeah, so yeah. I used, uh, I didn't actually use one of the analysis um, apps. I just literally used videoing um, within like the um, PE setting um, kind of asset and analysis and reflection. So a lot of the kids, when you come to a PE setting, um, when you explain how to simply throw a ball um, or catch a ball or kick a ball, um, like you explain to them, um, they might understand, but when it comes to actually doing it, they can't do it because there's some sort of breakdown. Um, you know, in the way that they learn. So we obviously know the different styles of learning. So having video analysis really brings in that kind of kinesthetic um, century style of learning. So you can have a look at how you performed it, um, and then from that you can kind of adjust the way you've done something. So um, I'll show you a little video here of just some of the kids uh, that were uh, on prac and um, able just to put a little compilation together. It's not, it's not that great. But. So we did quite a lot of proxy learning where like kids would be kind of in these groups. One would be kind of the video analysis person, another one would be the coach. So you have students actually coaching each other, giving feedback. So you can see one of the kids there explaining um, basically how to make how to throw a javelin, all the processes that they need to involve in doing that. And then they were then able to go back, look at the video, work out like what they had done wrong according to the cues that they were giving or given. Um, so just created a good, another good learning uh, tool really to increase their ability. Um, I think students really enjoyed it as well. But so they were using their own mobiles, so they're um, not just implementing um, technology, but their own personal devices. Um, Jamie, did you find they actually uh, did improve? Based on a couple of you know a couple of watches and retakes. Absolutely. So I got to have the same class do um, uh, different events in athletics. Um, so the following week they did shop but without video analysis. Um, so firstly, I think their enjoyment of it, it increased the ability just to get around, look. Oh, this is what you did. This is what you did well. This is what you need to improve on. Um, but even from feedback from the students was real positive um, and you realise actually a lot of them were those kind of kinesthetic century learners so they sort of said when they saw themselves um, you know from that like third person you know it, it helps out a lot just that kind of visual aid um, and so I think it's a you know it's a fantastic thing you see on the professional level obviously it's very um, you know it's used highly really in, in all the professional sports video analysis um, so better performance, but I think to better learning on, on, on that younger level as well or in the um, uh, schooling level. And so. so just quickly, like the app that one of the apps we looked at just kind of was like that. It's me shooting a basketball. Um, you can slow it down. You draw lines. You can get angles. So you get the degrees of angles, all that sort of stuff, um, which like you know, in past class, which is um, an elective, 
they look at biomechanics. It's really simple, really cheap to use. Um, but just for you guys, we were going to do an exercise, but it won't. Like we just won't have time to yep. do it. So essentially, like if you're, I mean, a topic such as like communication, you do a little activity here where somebody's got the sheet of paper and you're talking to somebody with the with the whiteboard and you've got to get them to draw the shapes that you're that you have here, but you can't use the word square, oval, or circle, right? So you could have the third student, um, you know, somebody standing there, somebody's drawing, you're filming it. When you when you watch it back, I mean, both students can work out, particularly the student who's trying to communicate the information, they can watch themselves actually see what they were saying and the way that the person who is trying to draw the shape, how they're responding. So it's like it's an instant sort of feedback mechanism. Um, it's quick, it's fun, um, and we think that from based on our experience that it actually is quite authentic um, and kids get a lot out of it and it's good fun. Fantastic. Round of applause. Okay, the next one. Setting up, I think, whose group were you guys up? You were in B. Who was, uh, that was it? Okay, we might jump to a keynote then. So if you guys want to set up. Um, while you're setting up, maybe you can go back to your seats probably for the keynote. A um, uh, couple of things on that, on that last one in particular. Um, one of the best things you can do as a teacher is to film. Okay, so ask one of your students to film one of your lessons. Not your first one, okay? But you know, once you get a bit confident, the best way to you for you to reflect on your practice practice is to video one of your lessons. See how many times you say ah or um. Okay, see how much you stand in the one spot. All that type of stuff. <coughs> They weren't coming up? Oh, Should auto refresh? I'm going to stick this over here. See if that gets. That's going to get the board and them, isn't it? Pretty much? Yeah, that'd be right. If I get them to stand. You guys stand here? Yeah, that's good. It's good. Yeah, okay. Hey, nice. The rest of us in the audience, remember we're not just uh, tuning out, we're actually making a little note of each of the presentations because we're going to do a bit of a, uh, an exit poll slash, you yeah. know, uh, survey at the end when we vote, uh, probably depending on time, might might end up just being a rush show of hands um, and, uh, for the winner. But um, do I need to buy any more time? Are we almost ready? We're all good. Who's on this broadcast? No. Who's on this broadcast? Yeah. It does. Go public. It's dead. Go public. DLDG. 2013. So I imagine uh, Matthew might be on it. We'll see. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, watch what you say about anybody. Uh, here you go. Do you want to <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Are we ready to go? All right. Go right now. Over to the uh, natural selection duo. All right. So we're just going to show you first what the icon looks like. This is the RS app. So um, that's what you can um, download in the app store. It's free. Works on Apple products. Yeah, Not just that. Apple. iPhones and iPads. Okay. So this is our game. This is the first one yes, uh, no. up the top. That's what it looks like. And this is the first thing that you sort of go into when you're starting the game. All right. So you want to, as soon as you don't appear, you need to select the color of your coat. Only select one. Tap to continue. So there's our mate Darwin. He's coming up. And we're going to select white coat. You are so, and basically you're picking if you're going to be a white dingo or a red dingo. And we're going to see which is better, so. They picked a white dingo. New quest, eat to grow. You need to keep eating. So what you're seeing up there is just the exact image of what's on the iPad? Yes. 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 So um, there's different sort of quests you can create. Um, I don't know what kind of, you can make all sorts of different types of games. Anyway, so this is you on the map. And this is UTS. I've just got it set up to quick travel at the moment. But normally when you do this game with students, you have them run and they've got to go to the area to actually get to the rabbits for food. And so you can see they pop up on the map. We're not going to 
we've gone around the uni to do it today. We so could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> we could. But it's better to do it in open space because at the moment in the uni, as you can see, that rug has popped up in I don't know what room. Ah. So me to it out on the open. I do call this place a rabbit so, one. <laughs> what Kate is doing now is just sort of completing the quest. We've set the quest to be you have to eat ten rabbits to be able to, you know, have the strength and the the maturity to be able to mate. So you're not going to be um, attracted to your mate if you're weak and yeah. haven't eaten anything. Um, I don't think we'll get through all ten of them. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so they just automatically pop up based on the time, or have you set that? Yeah, time? I'm going to yeah, based on um, yeah different times. So you can set it to appear really quickly, or um, only if you've achieved a certain quest, or um, all different. So yeah. I've logged into the I'll show you the editor. Yeah. Because you can make all sorts of games, and I've heard of teachers doing it where the students make their own games. So this is the. What's it? Can I draw the game? Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to search. No, I've got it before. So okay. okay, so this is the editor on the screen. Once you go in, you can edit on it. It doesn't have to be Matt. Matt has popped up now. That's the look at that little human horse. Uh, <laughs> okay, so in here you have a quest editor. So we've got two quests in there, but you can add extra ones in. There's all. You can add your own medium things. Basically, we had to decide. Um, What's it called again? Natural selection. And we had to decide what we could do to make the game suitable for natural selection for teaching in stage six that would work within this game platform. So you can add objects and you can have characters that have conversations. So our character Darwin, you can add more scripts. And it's basically a like you pick or turn this to what you're going to do. So you can also have um, it set to a certain location and things will appear on the map so you can do treasure hunts and things. Um, yeah, there's, um, you can add your own media for the things or you can use the preset ones in there. So like the box and dial one, they're just preset ones. Yeah, so we've got like the baby character there, so that will only appear after you've completed, um, completed the first two quests, and after you've... Made it? Yeah. Yeah, so then you get a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so the point is that we can... One of the, um, the syllabus points for um, biology is in the senior syllabus is to model natural selection, actually do a first investigation to model it for this sort of thing. So um, also, we get some kids yeah. outside running around, yeah. so they're going to have to run to get to the food. And we have at the end of the, um, you get a plaque that comes up at the end of the game. It tells you to select a different coat and try it again and time yourself to see which one worked better. So it should technically it should take you longer on the white one because we've changed the amount of rabbits that appear and how often they appear. So yeah, but anyone can join them. You just got to be. Yeah, and it's reasonably, reasonably easy to use to get going. So you can do, yeah, you can do treasure hunts and all sorts of things. You could use it in any KLA and you can have students use it and take them off. Take a, I think it would take a couple of lessons to be able to teach the students how to use the editor, but then I'm sure they'd come up with some things. So, yeah, you can have videos pop up and talk to you and all sorts of things in games. That we've done this sort of thing, sorry, the eyes, they also um, have options to do QR codes. So you might have a QR code in the southern new school that they can go and see and go and walk something. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> My broadcast go to sleep. All right. We're all good? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Post the session. B. Are they coming up? Awesome. Let's see. We could. When did I have the other? When was the other keynote? It says 5:15. I think. 5:15. So we do have time to squeeze in post this session. Yeah, 5:15. Post this session B. Just.
pause the broadcast.